So once you have a thorough picture of what the enclosure is doing right now, you begin your work. And in this case, it's gonna be crawl space retrofit, attic retrofit. We're gonna start with the crawl space because this is my family and we're gonna do it in stages because we all have normal lives as well. But we're gonna fix the crawl space, make sure that that cool air that's getting down there, that's then pressurizing that part of the house and pushing it out is not allowing air to get out and therefore air is not coming in. Then when the seasons turn before winter, starts, we're going to hit the attic and make sure that when hot moist air tries to get it up into the attic, it's not able to get out and therefore it's not able to push in and out and cause cold air to be drawn in. Have you been in your crawl space? Do you know what your crawl space looks like? It might be this. My dad said that this was a very scary place before we spent so much time in it. Now we're in the midst of retrofitting this crawl space, encapsulating it, and it has gotten a lot less scary. We know all the spiders' names. We know the camelback crickets very well. It's my buddy, the water heater. We have some places where you can stand up, which is where Grace is right now filming this. We're, uh, we're serious stuff. I have a more serious ventilator than this. You need to have a serious hat when you're down here. My dad somehow is just wearing a baseball cap, but I swear I would have brain damage by now if I weren't wearing my hard hat. In general, people who are doing this for a living, um, you should feel empathy for them because this is very hard work. It's very satisfying, which is cool. But what we're in right now is this vented crawl space. This is a very common. Most crawl spaces that you're gonna find, especially in the south and southeast, are gonna be vented. It means that they've got vents in the exterior walls that are allowing the air to come and go to outside. That, in theory, back when they thought of this idea, was great because they knew that houses that are up on piers, up on stilts, were great. And then people wanted to store stuff underneath the house. And so then they wanted to protect that and they put like fencing, you know, uh, paneling that looked like this that allowed a lot of wind wash through up and then now we've got this place where we want to keep our Christmas trees and our valuables and whatever else our ladders and stuff like that we want people to take and so now we've totally enclosed them and we just leave these little tiny windows it actually does not work it doesn't work they found out people like advanced energy had done research in the 80s 90s 2000s and found out that this is a terrible idea because the concept that the temperature inside the crawl space is going to be the same as the temperature outside is great until you think about the sun because everything inside the crawl space is shaded. And so it's going to be several degrees, maybe a bunch of degrees cooler than outside air. And so you're gonna get a lot of condensation when that hot moist air in the summertime comes in here and starts wreaking havoc with your ducts with your equipment that you've got down here, with your surfaces that are exposed to house temperatures. And in this case, this is a great crawl space. We have a very simple shape, just one plane, the ceiling. There's no changes in height or anything like that. And there's no insulation up there, which we would have had to rip out and throw in the garbage. That would be a terrible way to insulate this crawl space because insulation doesn't block air leakage. We found out that there's a ton of air leakage coming in here. And so we want to be able to insulate at the walls, which is the right place to do it. So first thing we're going to do is block off these uh, vents to outside. That will take care of a lot of the air leakage coming in here. Then we're going to use 475 High Performance Building Supply products. We're going to drape the walls with an airtight vapor open membrane called DA. The DA membrane being vapor open is very important. Uh, and it's so important that I'm gonna take off my hat for you for a moment. When you have plastic on the floor of a crawl space, that's good because dirt is wet and it is going to be evaporating up into the crawl space. The walls, are also potentially going to be wet, but we don't want to trap moisture in the concrete or cinder block walls because if it just stays in there and it's not allowed to dry into the house, if it's coming from outside, that might potentially cause a structural problem. So we are actually going to install a dehumidifier down here and make sure that if there is a spike in humidity because of water coming in from outside, that that can be taken care of, but also that the walls are relieved of their burden of water because you just don't want them to be waterlogged all the time and not able to dry out. So we're not gonna put plastic on the walls. That would be bad. We're going to put a vapor open material, this DA membrane. This is one of the reasons that most people are gonna hire a professional company to do this because this is not fun. We actually had to jack up because we wanted to make sure to get the uh, furnace here that's sitting on cinder blocks. We wanted to make sure that we got the membrane underneath the furnace and not cut around those piers because they're cinder blocks, they have holes in them. It just gets very complicated. So you just wanna make sure that you are prepared when you come to this kind of a project. If you're working with a professional, make sure they are prepared when they're doing this and that they've done this before uh, is generally a good idea. We have never done this before. So this is a first time for me. So you're gonna see a lot of the mistakes that we make and um, I'm happy to talk about that stuff. 
We did find, of course, once you get down here, that there are ducts that are completely disconnected. We found plumbing problems. So once you start spending time in your crawl space, you're going to find out that there's a lot of stuff that needs to get fixed before you do all this waterproofing. Because what we are doing to this crawl space is turning it into a boat so that it will not have water coming in from below. A boat is also a bathtub, technically. So if there's water getting into this crawl space from above, like from a problem, plumbing problem, it's going to stay in here. It's not getting out. So we're going to potentially have that dynamic. And so you want to make sure that you're fixing all problems from below and above to make sure that you are uh, protecting your family from health concerns, which are the most important thing. So we're at a halfway point with this crawl space. We are trying to get it done, but frankly, it's taken a lot of time just to get this 20 mil uh, tarp down. This thing is very thick. It's very hardy because we're going to need to climb on it to get to the heating and cooling system over there and all the ducts and everything down here. So we wanted to make sure that it was going to be something more than just the bare minimum. So 20 mil was pretty hardcore. All of the seams are taped with Tescon Vanna, which you saw used on the Tiny Lab extensively. You will see me use this tape again. I love this tape. I also love this multi-bond, which is um, a pre- formed gasket. So it's a, it essentially takes the place of caulk or an adhesive that you would apply with a caulk gun because caulk guns are horrible and disgusting. They made a farting sound when you use them. They're just not reliable in my experience with my technique. And frankly, I haven't met anybody who's that good at applying stuff with those guns. So that is what's applying this uh, tarp to the cinder block walls and the brick. So we're sure that we've got an air seal here. Uh, we had a couple places where we had to skip it, like where the water heater is, but we're not worrying about that right now. We haven't done the rim joist. And we haven't sealed the cinder block wall itself. You can see it behind me there. We've got all kinds of little weep holes going through. That's going to be covered with the DA membrane. Again, all this stuff is from 4755 Performance Building Supply. It's kind of a cool experiment that we're running using very high-performance new construction building materials for a retrofit. That's what we're doing here. And it seems to be working very well so far. The last piece of the puzzle is probably, no matter how good of a job we do, air sealing and sealing the dirt away so that we don't have moisture coming up in here. We have these cinder block walls, and we will have four inches exposed at the top of the cinder block wall to make sure that we can do a termite inspection, because termites are big around here. And this is an old house, and for sure they're already kind of around. So we have a moisture pathway. We need a dehumidifier down here, even if it's just for peace of mind. So we're going to be uh, hopefully using an installed permanent dehumidifier. It's going to be rigged up with our HVAC system. Uh, until we get that in here, we're using the Ultra Air Sentry humidity monitor to test. It's basically this. This is all it is. It's this beautiful little humidity sensor. This is going to tell us what's going on with the dew point and the temperature down here so that we can track it from upstairs. This is what's beautiful about this. You log in to the portal and you are able to check it while you're sitting in the safety of your living room. You don't have to come to the crawl space. And then we'll be able to diagnose how quick and how fast and how big of a dehumidifier we need. Now, right now, we've got it hovering around 60% relative humidity, which is kind of amazing. Frankly, there's enough duct leakage down here that we've got a very air-conditioned space. This is like the coldest place in the entire house right now with the air conditioning running. And we have noticed that it slipped from 80% when we started down to 60. So that, again, is a big gain. 80% is kind of, now that we know from home chem, a kind of a danger level where mold and bacteria can start to grow on any surface. It could even grow on this tarp if it wanted to because there's enough water. I actually learned recently that you can grow plants in the desert as long as you have water. If you've got sun, you've got water. It doesn't really matter what you're growing it in. So, of course, we're going to test this because we want to know how far we've come. This is the same as you do on any normal home performance job. We want to know how much of a gain we've gotten just with what we've done so far. So we're going to do a blow order test. Now, I will warn you that we're in the middle of doing an addition on the front of this house. And so we've got a big gaping hole in the front wall that's covered with plywood, but it's not airtight covered with plywood. So this number is going to be like a number. It's not going to be a great number, but we want to know, no matter how bad it is, uh, we want to know if we've actually made some gains. Now, because of that membrane over the crawl space floor, I am not going to use depressurization mode anymore because I don't want that to billow up. And for sure, that will happen. You can even see carpet do that on this channel when you use the blower door and you've got air leakage and pressure boundary issues. So right now, we're going to run to 50 pascals to find out how much we've done just with a little bit of work we've done so far. So we started at over 5,000 CFM of flow at 50. So we came in right around 4,200. That is a 17% increase in air tightness. 
since we started. And again, we haven't done the rim joist. We haven't air sealed the top of the cinder block wall that where the uh, sill is meeting with the top of the cinder blocks. There's, we haven't done anything about the attic. And that's a lot of CFM to drop with just that. I actually am surprised myself. So this is how this stuff works. This is how beautiful this is. And remember that we have a gaping hole in the front of the crawl space now. Now we brought the crawl space down to 70% connection to outdoors, even though again, there's giant connections to outdoors because of the addition that's going on. That tells me that we're making a difference and the performance of this home is becoming more tuned. Again, we're aiming for the homeowner's goals, which in this case, my parents' goals. And I definitely did interview them about what they want out of this house. So please do keep tuned. We're gonna do more in the crawl space. We're gonna retest. We're gonna do more up in the attic. We're gonna retest as well. Please visit 475 High Performance Building Supply. Check out these cool materials that we're using, the tapes, the membranes, the Viscon, uh, liquid applied membrane. All that stuff can be used in a bunch of different ways. Comment, participate, subscribe. Tune in next time.